Good morning from San Diego. This is Dr. Rutledge, and I'm happy to announce a new podcast, Do Better to Be Better. It's not complicated. What we're saying is that we're going to be talking about those things that can happen in your life to make it better. Some are little things, eating better, making better choices, getting sleep, things like that are very simple, but we think can make major impacts on all of our lives. We're excited to talk about it because we're involved in the daily practice of medicine and surgery for people who are overweight or suffering other metabolic disease. I'm happy to be allying with Dr. Ilan here in Tijuana, Mexico, where we also have a new office in San Diego, California, and a future office in Mission Viejo, California. This is the beginning of our new podcast. Stick around. I think you'll have a good time. Good morning from Tijuana and San Diego. We're going to be talking today about Dr. Ilan and my program here in Tijuana and San Diego. And uh, the topic is a popular one, unfortunately, because one in four Americans suffer from reflux or gastroesophageal reflux disease or acid stomach, acid reflux into the esophagus, even up into the mouth, the throat, and even into the lungs. So we're going to talk about that a little bit because it is associated with weight loss or bariatric surgery. So that's what our plan is to talk about today. We welcome you to our podcast. Um, this is a video that we'll be pushing up on uh, YouTube. It's available, I'm told, on Spotify, which I have to apologize. I'm not on Spotify yet, so I hope you'll sign up or wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, what about reflux? What is reflux? Is it bad? How bad is it? What is it? What's going on? Well, basically, if you think about it, our body is a miracle. And there are miracles all over our body every moment of every day. And this miracle happens in all kinds of ways, like we can think, we can see, we can walk, all these things. But all of those things are dependent on one important system in our body. That system is our digestive system. We need energy to allow us to live and work and have our being. We need that energy to live, to do anything and everything. We need energy. And the mechanism for that, we don't have to think about much, but we can enjoy the most enjoyable part of getting energy, which is eating food. And of course, when you say eating food, we think of candy, popcorn, steak, potatoes, alcohol, wine. No, no. Coca-Cola? No. And other healthy things also. But all of those foods, as they come into us, we can't actually use Coca-Cola. That's not what we use to make ourselves think. It's not the Coke or ice cream or potatoes or apples or oranges that make us go. Obviously, everyone knows this, but we also often take for granted our digestive system. Our digestive system is truly a miracle. It takes in all these wild and different foods and drinks and spices and other chemicals that are in our lives, and it turns it into everything that we are and wish to do. That process is amazing, and it works almost perfectly almost all the time. But almost is an important point. There are many problems with digestion. One of the most important problems is that we are essentially all being poisoned by our new environment. The fatty foods, the junk foods, the sweet foods, meat, dairy, eggs, and other foods that are bad for us are overwhelming us and leading to a pandemic. What? Not only is there a pandemic of the terrible COVID virus, but before that, and probably long after that, there is another pandemic going on. And that is a pandemic of obesity, heart disease, stroke, cancer, and dementia. And each one of these diseases is profoundly and tightly linked to what we eat in our diet. Those things are topics that we discuss and we treat every day in Hospital BC here in Tijuana and San Diego. We see those diseases and we're happy to say we can often improve them or cure them. That's an exciting opportunity. But the other issue that we're going to talk about today is a common issue. That is, when we go to eat, the powerful digestive system turns on itself and may damage, harm, and even 
take your life. What happens is that when we eat food, there is in fact almost a magical transformation of turkey and chicken and apples and oranges from their constituent parts as a vegetable or a meat or something like that. What happens is a massive, tremendous change in the material that we put in and what we get out. So when we eat, when we eat food, something has to happen. We have to break the food down. We have to destroy the food. And then in its individual atom and molecule components, we have to convert that food into something else. Something else like an amino acid. Something else like a carbohydrate or a glucose molecule. Something else like a fat molecule. Each and every one of these things must be developed, devised, digested out of an apple or an orange or a piece of asparagus or a carrot. That process requires some powerful chemicals. The three general classes of chemicals involved in digestion are acid in the stomach, hydrochloric acid, a powerful acid that can destroy tissue. Second of all, we have bile, a very powerful molecule, which can help solubilize fat into a digestive chemical. And then on top of that, we have the enzymes themselves, trypsin, chymotrypsin, and they can also be part of the tools that break apart these molecules and create the individual components of what we use then to make our lives go forward. Our lives are using a variety of individual components. These components include the energy to do our lives, to move, to breathe, and things like that, as well as the structural components, our bones, our skin, our eyes, the brain, each and every part of that is part of our system. And all of this comes from what we eat. Okay, so we have this powerful digestive system. This digestive system can completely destroy and break apart all the components of what we eat. And it is tremendously powerful. It is tremendously capable of basically destroying tissue, destroying animal and plant tissue, breaking it into no longer animal or vegetable, but into the individual molecules. So the reason I bring all this up is to emphasize the power of the digestive system. Now, I'd like to point out another unique feature. The digestive system, from your mouth to the rear end when it comes out, is a one-way street. Almost every bit of food that you eat ultimately gets partially digested and the excess is thrown away. But it's always a one-way street always one way, in at the top and out at the bottom, unless you get reflux. And reflux is what we're gonna talk about. Now having given you a little bit of an introduction, what we're talking about now is when that powerful digestive process acts in reverse, bad things happen. If we can take and imagine that powerful digestive system and torch it, we can turn it around, make it go in reverse, and suddenly begin digesting us by taking the acid in the stomach, the enzymes in the stomach, and the bile in the stomach. And instead of putting it safely in the lining of the stomach and the small intestine, if we begin to bring it back into the esophagus, back into our throat or into the lungs, that's reflux. And in short, that's bad business. Because it is so powerful, because it chemically is able to destroy animal tissue, and that's us, it means that it is potentially a dangerous and deadly event. Oftentimes it's just annoying, difficult and painful, but either way, I wanted to emphasize on this beginning discussion that this is big, important issue. Now, something odd has been happening. Across the United States and around the world, the frequency of reflux is increasing. That is to say, recent research suggests that one out of four of all Americans suffer from reflux. What? In other words, when you look around the room and count off between one and four, one out of every four people has reflux. Obviously, that's terrible. But what's happened is that try and treat reflux, there's a multi-billion dollar industry of surgeons, doctors, and drugs used to treat and prevent reflux. So for example, those of you who are familiar may know there's something called PPIs or proton pump inhibitors, and protons are what hydrochloric acid really is, and that chemical that is blocked by PPIs leads to a billion dollar industry selling those pills to Americans. Four billion dollars for just one of the pills. That means this is a widespread and difficult disease. 
and it can be particularly difficult for people who've had bariatric surgery. Some people report that if you've had the sleeve gastric surgery, you can have it up to three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, even 50% of sleeve patients suffer sometimes from reflux. Other surgeries can have reflux as well, the lap band. And of course, Dr. Ilan and I do a lot of mini gastric bypass surgeries, and that has been reported to both have either a very low incidence of bile reflux or by other surgeons to have a high incidence. And we'll talk a little bit about that today. So let's go back and say, even if you're not having bariatric surgery, you're likely, 25%, to have episodes of bile reflux so, and, and acid reflux. So let's talk a little bit about it. Why are so many people now developing acid reflux, bile reflux, and reflux in general when that was uncommon as few as 10, 15, 20, or 100 years ago. What's the deal? Well, the answer is our lifestyle. One of the most profound and important features that causes reflux is we're going against the grain. What we have done is disordered that normal process, and the normal process is called peristalsis. What I mean by that is your body grabs a hold of food after you swallow it, and it squeezes tight above the food, holds that, in a coordinated fashion and sends a neural signal to the next muscle. And then that squeezes and that is held and then the one beneath it squeezes. So just as you might milk a cow, the process of what's called peristalsis milks food from the top out the bottom. Now, as long as that works correctly, you have very little or no reflux. But what we know is our new lifestyle, including a variety of things we should not do, can cause reflux. And we're gonna go over some of those things and give you a guide to reversing and preventing future reflux. So let's look at it again. What we wanna do is put food into the top here, into the esophagus, squeeze tight right below that, then squeeze tight again, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release in a coordinated fashion. What kind of foods mess that up? What kind of foods ruin that process? Well, meat, dairy, eggs, and low fiber junk foods cause a discoordination. And when there's discoordination, sometimes you get reflux, especially if you do other things that interfere with the normal process. So one of the most important things is to recognize that the reason that meat, dairy, eggs and junk foods, highly processed foods, cause this is because they are lacking an important component of food, fiber. What? Okay. Now fiber, most of us know, it's just um, a non-digestible part of plants. That's right. And we don't think much of it. Maybe it can help us have a little bit more of a normal bowel movement. Well, who really cares? I mean, it's not that important. And so fiber is supposed to be good for us, but we don't focus on it very much. Here's one of the most important take-home messages of this podcast today. If you don't eat enough fiber, the gut peristalsis begins to become discoordinated. It can't grab a hold and move the food through the tube, that is your digestive tract. When that doesn't work, then it often goes back and forth as opposed to moving forward. And let me explain that by talking about toothpaste. I know you didn't think I was gonna to say toothpaste there. Toothpaste and a toothpaste tube also has, if you can imagine it, a tube. And if you wanna move the toothpaste out the top, you squeeze here and the toothpaste goes up. And imagine if the toothpaste was liquid. When you released here, the liquid would fall back down, okay? If it's thick and you squeeze here, then the toothpaste is here and then you could squeeze again and get the toothpaste to come out the end of that tube. Now, if you flip that over, when we squeeze above with our gut and then squeeze below again, when we release and go to squeeze again, if the food is very liquid and doesn't have fiber and isn't thick, then it is more likely to slosh back and forth and then result in reflux. That's what happens with low fiber foods. So the number one reason to have reflux is people who eat a low healthy diet. That is meat, dairy, eggs, and highly processed junk food. Those things are low in fiber. So what we wanna do, number one, is if you're suffering from reflux, see your doctor. But what we talk about when we negotiate and discuss and guide our patients is number one, we do a careful survey to see what they're eating. 
And what we find is people eating junk food, Coca-Cola, ice cream, junk food, fried chicken, potato chips, french fries, milkshakes, hamburgers, cheese, those things are generally very low fiber foods. Those people who eat that way not only get an increase in reflux, but studies show they also have a significant increase in their risk of irritation of the esophagus. That is, because of the reflux, the digestive juices we talked about, acid, bile, and enzymes, begin to digest the poorly protected esophagus. And when that happens over time, those people eating those foods are more likely to get this irritated, inflamed area turn into cancer. Either cancer of the top of the stomach or cancer of the esophagus. So for a lot of reasons, for comfort, for joy, for enjoying your day, number one, you don't want reflux. But the most important part of maybe not wanting reflux is you don't want that burning pain, you don't want the irritation, and partial digestion of your own esophagus, and we don't want years of that turning into a cancer which can take your life. So all those reasons say, eat a healthy diet. Now there's more to it than that. There are a variety of other topics we're gonna to talk about, and then we'll try and bring this presentation to an end today. We know some other things that are obvious. If you think about the stomach, it holds about a quart. Imagine if you tried to eat two quarts of food. Give you a second to figure out what you think might happen. If you try and eat a lot, if you try and eat too much, if you eat to overfill your stomach, guess what? It can reflux, okay? If you reflux, you get all the problems we talked about. So number one, don't eat so much. Now, why do people eat so much? Well, because frequently they're not paying attention. So they have the TV on, they're on their phone, they're talking to somebody else, they're walking and talking, they're in their car, and they're enjoying something very tasty. All these reasons, you eat too much, you're gonna get reflux. So one of the first things besides telling you to eat healthy is, hey, relax. If you're having reflux, one of the most important things is don't overeat. Well, then people say, well, I have trouble stopping eating. Yeah, because you don't know how to eat. So I have an example of people doing the wrong thing, hurting themselves. So let me tell you a story. Imagine someone buys a car. It's an expensive car. Let's say it's a very expensive Mercedes Benz. They buy that car, they get it home, and they're very dissatisfied because the car keeps crashing. Over and over again, the car keeps crashing. So they call the dealer, they're very upset, and they say, bring the car in. Salesperson says, I'm really sorry, this expensive Mercedes shouldn't be crashing, and they walk out to take the car for a test drive to see what's wrong. And as they walk up, they notice the rear end of the car is all smashed up. They get in the car, and what they notice is the new owner is driving the car backwards. In other words, it's not surprising you get reflux if you do things incorrectly. If you want to get better, what we say simply is turn the car around. That's all we have to do. Turn the car around, and it'll stop crashing. It's a good car but you can't drive it backwards without having problem. So in the same way, someone who has reflux is suffering from problems and complications in part because they're driving the car backwards. So number one, if you eat fast, if you eat watching TV, if you eat talking to people on the phone, if you eat with your phone, watching your phone, things like that, these lead you to not think clearly about the underlying issue, which is don't overeat. If you stuff two pounds into a one pound bag, you're likely to get reflux, okay? What other things cause reflux? Well, number one is trying to eat more later in the day. So a lot of people who skip breakfast have reflux. Why? Because the body is set up to try and eat a certain amount of calories. If you skip breakfast, your body's gonna say, no problem, but I know how much calories I need, so I'll have to eat more for lunch and dinner. That leads to more problems because to get the same number of calories in, you have to eat a larger amount at lunch and dinner. And some people then kind of skip lunch. They'll have a very big dinner. That's a problem, okay? So number one, eat a big breakfast. And also remember, of course, job advice tip number one, eat healthy food. Good research suggests that people who eat meat, particularly processed meat, dairy, and eggs, have a high fat diet and fat releases the valve that helps protect. 
So these and other things are things that cause us problems, and we'll talk to you more about that in our next video. Thanks very much for watching. Okay, thanks again for listening to our show today. This uh, podcast, Do Better to Be Better, is going to be focusing on things you can do in your lives, your daily life, to make it better. We ask you to go ahead and subscribe at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube so that you can keep up to date on our upcoming podcast series. In addition, we'll be on all of our social media channels. You'll be able to follow us. And right now, you can follow me, Dr. Robert Rutledge, on Dr. R. Rutledge on Facebook. And there are thousands of people following us on that area so you can find out more of what happens in their lives as they try to make their lives better day to day. Thanks again. Have a great day.